it's Jane. How are you? I've got to share my little haul with you before I might paint these. I think this will, yeah, create them with ink or use them as inspiration somewhere. They're just the cutest little plants. They're called Phytonias. And look at this. Out in the light, this, uh, look, it's absolutely fluorescent red with the green. And this is a little butterfly that I found. Uh, it's called a blue triangle. Look at the turquoise, it's so gorgeous. Inspiration from the garden. Can we open his little wings up? Cause he's all turquoise inside. Oh, come on little buddy. Oh, he's too stiff. <laughs> How gorgeous are these? This is the opposite. But they all look so nice together, little indoor plants. I need to put them somewhere. Maybe I could even keep them down here. Anyway, I'm not sure yet. But we've got uh, <laughs> those as inspiration. I might leave that one on the desk like that. I suppose I could... I, I don't get enough light in here for plants, I don't think. They look very bright at the moment. Uh, I'm just thinking out loud. I don't know what I'll do with that little butterfly. Right, how are you? I have been having a very lovely uh, time, but we're going to do a little, we're into a new month here. We've got Easter Monday, it's public holiday in Australia. It's sort of like our Thanksgiving in a way, this sort of holiday uh, here. It's it got time off, most places, I think it's also school holidays, so. Uh, in most parts of Australia, so you know, people are having a nice day today. Ooh, family day. What are we creating in? Oh, okay. It's all about this is a sign. This is a sign from the gardens that this is what we're painting. I do feel like painting eyes though, I won't sugarcoat that. But maybe we could do some sort of these little cutenesses with all that. It looks like the veins are painted on, but could maybe I, could they be like the little dresses or like a little fairy or something? I'm not sure yet. This is from another live stream and I'm just, I was playing around with this washi. Actually, I used it in the thumbnail of the little video. Um, and... I open up my book and there it was. It was what I opened up to. There's the washi tape there. There's the original one. What? <laughs> so I could start something completely fresh. This is uh, washi tapes here. What have we got in here? Oh, these are the new, um, one of the new stamps. This is some of the new stamps from the new collection. I love that stamp so much and was it in here that was the random design oh, anyway sometimes I can't exactly remember everything that I've done because I do a lot of art right this is one of the new stamps here oh this was playing around with funny ink and not stamping properly and just quickly stamping stamps to test that they're working as stamps and then I've just added a little bit of colour but this is the kind of page that I would zoom past if I was showing you things because they're not well this is very much a little test journal this isn't really a love stream journal is it no it's not so do I just although there are some things that have turned into love streams here but do I just keep it as it is or do we try and try to make this a nicer page. I sort of feel like uh, I'm going to make this a nicer page. So what I've got, so that I have to feel, it is part of my journal. Oh, it's not that stamp. What are you doing, Jane? It's actually, this is the straight faced stamp. And my fingernails are hideous. And I did just have my emergency nail polish. What did I do with it? Eh lost it um this is a straight faced stamp so there's three little straight faced faces that's the smallest one this is the larger one it's really good size for journals 
Uh, that's actually one of the other new stamps. And um, I think we'll, I might make this just, and I've used one of the wild ink stamps here. That one that I showed you before. So it's got these sort of lines. Hey, Zandra and Debbie, Babs, how are you going? Um, hey, PJ Mo, how are you? How are you? Oh, good, you're doing art as well. Let's have everyone grab your journals if you can and come do a little bit of art. Um, yeah, so I've got some of these waves on here. So I think I might finish this because otherwise I don't really like it. Uh, yet because well there's not much happening so what about if we incorporate this little inspiration and here and here in different ways shall we do that I think we shall uh, right so I love the idea of this as like little petals, like a little dress. I wonder if they're cascading that way and they're cascading that way. Now, I don't have an, a green in that particular. Um, I must say, this actually brings up an interesting point. When I am picking a colour, or sorry, picking an art supply, I must say most of the time I'm picking it for the colour. This is why... I love having so many different colours at my beck and call. And this is why you've got to do your swatching and use your art supplies regularly so that you've got that good memory recall of all of your colours. And the only way to do that is to use them. Right, now I also know that my Euphoria palette has got some really nice greens in it as well. And it's been stolen off my desk. Um, so I just have to run and get that. So I'll just be one second, just excuse me, because I can't really live without my watercolours. Hey, Poppy. Oh, okay, I remember it. I can't even blame anyone else. It was me that did that. Oh, poop. Ah. Annoyance itself. Oh, well. I'll just use something else then. Ah. Euphoria had some not good greens in it. Anyway, this has got some really good greens. So I've got Gods and Monsters ink. I'm not on Gods and Monsters paper, so I'm not going to do all the splitting and that business. But Gods and Monsters has some really nice greens in it. So I'm just going to pull them out. So I've got Medusa, uh, Minerva, Chimera, Mercury. That's a really, really lime, greeny one. Oh, that's going to be... Okay, yeah, I need that for those. Uh, Medusa, of course, did I have to say that? Athena and Cerberus, which is a beige with green undertones as well. And then I'll leave these because the little veins... That's really going to be Venus, Juniper and Hermes. And do you know, even this guy. Uh, so let's, um, I've got them in the water brushes, inks already. So these are those cute little gods and monsters inks. I'll start with a lighter ink just to get my eye in, my hand in. Mm, I'll pop my little flowers there. And my flowers, my little plants. Are any of you into plants? Let's try and get this. I've just got to study. I've got to do a little live drawing. I've got to do just a little studying of it. And I'm going to have to flip it. Oh, no, here we are. I've got a little petal here that's dangling down. Water brush is a good one. And the little stem like so. But they're all quite compact and close. So I'll do the underlayer in this. And I'll do some maybe darker ones. We'll just see what happens. And it gets this nice little fluffy, fluffiness. What have I got on the other side? Okay, oh, stamping ink, that's all right. 
And see the Cerberus, this ink is already splitting. I can see it's going into its beiges and its greens. Ah, it's just such a glorious little ink. I really need to, get, I'm not getting them in close enough. So I'll come in like that. But I need to come with a different ink there, I think. Okay, let's do them separate, separate. Then I'll do a different colour. Okay, okay, okay. So I'll get some of these ones. And I'm not really capturing, sort of capturing the shape, but not really the essence of this leaf yet. Who knows where we're going, I don't know. And although technically it's not March here anymore, we are, in some places of the world, it's still March, right? So I could still even think about this being something to do with mythical March. Oh, I did want to do something in Nana, crave crafts a necklace of laughter and joy. Um, I used to listen to a podcast. So the word Inanna, that, and that's the goddess of uh, ancient Sumeria, is it? Mesopotamia? Yeah. She's the goddess of love and war. <laughs> Strange mix. Um, and then we have, <laughs> well, Athena is the goddess of, the Greek goddess of war and sort of, and, uh, well, the strategic thinking and of, wisdom which you sort of wouldn't think of war as being particularly wise but maybe she helped keep people out of war or finished them I can't quite think of instances where she really stayed out of things and helped dramatically they usually well they don't Gods and goddesses don't really care about the consequences for the human beings. They're just thinking of themselves. It's sort of like, are these earrings that have just grown and gone crazy? They've turned into the hanging gardens of Babylon? I don't know. I'm just, I'm sort of just having fun. <laughs> okay, now this, I'm going to start with this colour over here. And it's okay to just have fun, isn't it? Why not? Uh, so this is from the Roman Gods and Monsters set, this Minerva, and it's in one of the Inky Depths brushes with the mermaid tail. Just in case you're new here and you don't know what it is that I'm using. And if you've never seen this before, it's like the mermaid markers you might have seen. From me before this they've got individual hairs as a brush and we love a beautiful brush tip because it's just it does this very this thin and thick thing which is very nice so I can get a very fine line like that and I can just squeeze a little bit of ink or I can just lay my brush down a little bit more and get the bristles to spread and I can get from thin to thick in one stroke. So why don't we do a few of those sorts of this and that's very handy for leaves. It's not really that leaf shape in particular but and then maybe so we've got these lighter colour ones here. Oh well, might come in with chimera. So this is a darker green or oh, did I just do that? No that's not going to differentiate it might do Medusa. Okay, let's just, or should I go into more bluey green? Um, sorry, I'm making creative decisions. Hey Heather, hey Shauna, how are you going? Oh, I'm brilliant and fun. <laughs> oh, that's very nice of you, thank you. So I'm going thin, just pushing down thick. Different types of brush tips. You get the thin and thick happening, but I just want to show you something. So this, because this is individual brush bristles, when I go thin, thick, uh, so I might go, I'm just, I will change colour. I just want to show you something over here. So this is Harpy. Um, poor Harpies. And I, I feel sorry for all the creatures. 
flirty with monsters. Okay, uh, so we go thin and thick. Like because we're pushing the bristles, that's the way these work. Uh, so that's how you get that different. Why she wants a link of sausages in her hair, I'm not too sure, but that's what we've got. Um, so we can have these very thin lines or I can come in and have these thick lines. With a different type of brush tip, so let's say this is a solid brush tip that's in the tippy toes. So this is one thing, it's not lots of little hairs. So to get that thin and thick effect, which you can get with this, just remember you don't push it straight at the paper like you do this one, um, because the hairs can't spread to give you that. What you can do is lever it down so it's just a different thing if you've got time to practice so you can come up very thin on the tippy toes why it's called that and then more to the side dragging it more to its side so you to get that thin and thick effect because i don't have the hairs there the black lines it looks like she's got some sort of strange cosmic bulb spot uh, which we shall fix in a second. Now this is a different type of brush um, uh, tip in a way. This is the Candy Dipper. So this is a, a waterproof one that's dry. This is a colour called Black Cat. And this is individual hairs as well. But you dip it in. Oh, I've got some little speckles. I love that. Okay, and then I'll do this here. And just continue um, the stamped lines. I could pick um, LTQ would be good for this as well. Uh, but I see how there's some little broken lines in here. I just wanted to try and um, just continue that sort of effect and then that will dry. Of course, I'll put my hand all through it, but well, yeah. And then I'll just show one other brush tip, just to so you just keep that in mind. So that one we can push up and down because it's got the little brush, the separate hairs. Just the way you use different brush tips. So although they're called the same thing, they're all a brush tip, which refers more to the shape. You use them slightly differently. So this is the brush musical marker. So this is a very white opaque ink. I'm going to go real, really light. And same thing. Um, I'm, when I want that thicker angle, I'm tilting it a bit more uh, to the side. So we've got different types of brush tips. That's all I was trying to show you. And it's about practicing with the amount of pressure that you put on the pen to get the lighter and darker effects. I'm just going to use a little bit of skinny dip here as well. So I'm going to pop these next to me. This might be celebrity skin here. So it's not just a floating head. Just while I let this dry and uh, think about what's happening over there. And then because this has got random things happening, um, is that going to be the page where it's just a little bit of a random page where it's got a little bit of this or that? Or am I going to try and get these two to talk to each other, creatively speaking? Am I going to try and get this to talk to this and incorporate this in here? Or am I just really going to cover it up? If I'd made a really good impression and you could tell that this was flowers, I probably would maybe try and keep it. You can even add the flowers something it's elsewhere. But I, I was practicing. I was just mucking around obviously I'm just was quickly testing things and rather than test things uh, just on plain paper or on something throw away I usually just put everything in my journals and um, and then it becomes part of my artwork because over time the swatches and tests um, I, I just start reworking on and, and incorporating them and that just makes me want to do more swatching and that like I said before is how you learn your art supplies and you get that color memory of the, all the colors that you have because if you're like me you're going to have quite a few supplies and when you need a particular color you, you need to know where you're going to find that and you've got that memory of okay you know I've got 
I know I've got that story of greens in like my Gods and Monsters inks, for instance. You know, I thought of that, or if I had my Euphorias here, that sort of I've got a few lovely little olives and plant greens. So it's good to you know do your little swatches, and besides that's fun. So I'm letting her come in front of this one, but that means I'll probably have a little bit of this darker colour coming in underneath. Some little details. I mean, is this their little outfits? Are they camouflaging themselves for a reason? Are they off to a ball? These are the questions I don't have answers to yet, but they will arrive at some point. Um, and although this is still drying, but this colour has started to do its little splits and its little gradations. But this one needs a bit of variety in it, I think. So did we start with... Um, this one has actually done a few little cartwheels and splits and things. Oh, that was the same colour. So let's, maybe I'll use a bit of Cerberus in behind this to fill this in a bit so it's not so spacious. It's a bit more luxurious with the greens. Come in behind here. I can layer this one over the top because it'll look like it's underneath anyway because it's a lighter colour. I'll even come through this and down here and let that run a bit because this isn't a watercolor paper it's a smooth operator paper it's not going to um, allow the inks to do their watercolor effects it'll hold detail better so it's just a creative decision but it's easier and nicer to draw on so everything is because it's smooth Depending on how you feel, of course. So I'm just bringing that little dress down a bit so she's not in a mini dress while the others are all in their uh, midi leaves. Rude. And what are we putting on the head? <laughs> just having a quick little look at... Um, questions. Uh, Caruso says, have I ever sold at art and craft fairs? If so, what are your tips? No, not really, not an art and craft fair. Um, with my, um, oh, not for a long time, let me think. Not, I've like had my art supplies, that more of that sort of thing. And my tip for that, um, but I don't even, I haven't done that for a long time. Uh, my f tip for that is, well, you're just really trying to be as helpful as possible to people and, um, you know, as inspirational as you can be uh, without overwhelming people, I guess. Um, so that people feel brave. Uh, but yes, just try and be friendly and you've got to... Of course, try and offer things that you know are going to, because you want to be able to sell your work. If you're selling your, oh, well, I used to sell my photography at like big flower and garden shows, but I, my photography was of butterflies and ladybugs, live ones, um, and flowers, and very, very in keeping with the people that were coming to that particular show. So they weren't so much art collectors, it's just that the art that I had there appealed to the people that were there, people who loved gardens, and if they love flowers in their garden, why wouldn't they want some flowers uh, in their... Sozzy! Sozzy! Oh, he's not going to stop. Um, why wouldn't they want flowers in their... on their walls as well? So, yes, no, I did used to sell a lot of um, my prints. But I would say um, mainly sell prints of work so that you can you know, have the different, you can have more work uh, 
and yeah just have everything looking as nice as you can and you look as nice as you can as well approachable and sometimes people are a little bit um, reticent about approaching an artist um, and because they think we might be little fabled creatures. Also, sometimes people say strange things. They don't mean it as an insult. When I, because I was doing photography, I can't, people would always say, wow, you must have the most amazing camera. And I, it's not really an insult, but you could interpret it that way because people are saying, you, it was the, I just was like, yeah, I send my camera off. And I pack her a little lunch and I send her off on her way and my camera comes back at the end of the day with all these amazing pictures. I'm like, wow, thank you, camera. <laughs> so it wasn't, um, but it's, people aren't really insulting you. But sometimes you can feel a little bit. Um, I suppose some people might try and insult you. That's, some people are a bit strange. And you just, you know, if you're going to put yourself out there, that's, you're going to, you know, potentially have someone that says something a bit strange. But most people are just in their own world and they don't mean anything uh, by it. People say strange things to me all the time. It depends on how you're feeling as to how how you uh, respond, that was uh, Hydra. I was just listening to T-Rex, the teeth of the Hydra upon you. You're dirty and sweet, oh yeah. Mm. Yes, I'm, I'm liking her a lot more already, just with a little bit of Shading and whatnot. Okay, now let's let's get these little ladies into um, formation. So we've got our little the little um, to me they're earrings <laughs> that have gone. They started off with just one leaf, little dangling ones, and then it just became a thing. And they all ended up with the dangling earrings. So I'm going to do the veineries in Twinkle Toes, I think, because this will stand out. And uh, that one's had a little. And the, so the little veining, I'll just study it for a second, comes down, but not to the end. So it'll come down. And we're not, but the ink isn't dry. So we're going to have a little bit of. Um, And veins aren't usually completely symmetrical, so I'll come down in this one. I'll do this one first. Try and twist the leaf around a little. Oops. Jess has been so mean to me all weekend. My dog. She's been very grumpy. I can hear her banging on up there. When I mean mean, like she just ignores me. And even though I'm, oh yeah, I'm looking after her and all that stuff, she just mean to me. This colour, this is courtier. This is going to look nicer on here because it's going to stand out a bit more. So in fashion illustration, if you have to do like a whole bunch of plaids or spots or a pattern, what you can often do is we just you fully illustrate certain parts. You don't have to do the whole thing because you'd be there forever. I suppose in these days of AI, Maybe you could ask it to repeat everywhere, like Photoshop, you know, sort of helped with that. But in the olden days, 
You don't have to draw the whole thing. So you just draw patches of the pattern. Maybe we can do something like that here. Where I can just intimate that these are the leaves and this is their little uh, edges. And then I might need to come around in their edge. So I might do some in there. I'll do one more here in that colour. I'm not really getting the full to get the shape a bit better. Hang on, let me try and do this a little bit better. No, that's not it. At least the fun thing about doing a repeated pattern is you do get time to practice it and get better at it. So they really do go out and then branch. Okay, so maybe I do need to do a little, few more branches. Doodly do. Um, Carissa the Dream says, how do you get the tiny details? When you need to go into tiny details, slow down. That would be my biggest tip is just slow down and that's where you just have a bit more control over what it is that you're doing and it's easier to get into those little details in a more refined way. It's, it's also difficult to do tiny details on something that is tiny so pick your battles. So if you've got the motor skills issue, then if you're going to do tiny details, do it on something bigger like this. When you've, because these girls are already so tiny, like they, you know, they really have to do little faces. I would say rather than try to, um, I might reverse the hair or uh, the order of the colours here. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. I'm just going to play. Um, oh, I got a, a plant called a beautiful dancer. And I'll show you. I'll, I know I can see it in my mind. I know exactly how it goes. So it, goes, it had a little fleshy little body like that. And then it's, it's I'm not joking. It's I have to bring it and show you. It's so stinking cute and it looks like it's dancing it's like this with little leaves at, at, at the end like and some of them are really dancing I might come in with this other color in here gosh they could be little kelp kelp creatures these ones Maybe this is her hair. These leaves are her hair coming down. Maybe she's just popping her head through. Hello. <laughs> so with the little details, uh, when it's small, getting in tiny details on something that's very, very small is not necessary, I don't think. Just taking that but you can work on tiny little details when something's a bit bigger so pick your battles so to speak because being able to you'll be able to see the tiny details at this scale your eyes couldn't see tiny details anyway like you wouldn't even be able to see eyelashes if someone was that small compared to my head you know unless, uh, you, unless you zoom in you just can't see it so adding concentrating on little tiny details on something tiny um, can be done just have it out of a very tiny pen so this is the micro um, in the finishing line pens which I saw we barely have any left of so that reminds me I just have to go and hoard some 
So this is a waterproof uh, pen. There's 10 different tips, 10 or 12, 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And uh, after the euphoria thing, I have to count out everything properly because lunacy. Um, yes, but there's the micro tips, there's the chisel tips and the brush tips. Different tips. Just pop that there. Just add some little ears because the hair is up and we're going to be able to see those. Oh, yum. There's a little bit of... Just going to add a little bit of black paint because I've got it around here. Just to, I've got to somehow start integrating that black, those black lines. So I'm going to just add more black lines, but in this very fine pen. Yeah, so this is one of the finishing line pens and this is Micro 2. There's one that's even finer. And now it's just got a little bit more, it looks like I've drawn them. I haven't stamped them because I'm adding my own touch. Yes, yeah, so for my tip for draw, doing very fine details, very fine instrument, that's going to help immensely. But also, um, yeah, pick your battles. And what, what details actually matter to you? And the scale of it, you know? In the scheme of things, what's going on with this hair? We've got a, a gum nut baby uh, do. And I, because their face obviously is a, a stamp that I've repeated, um, I can try and get a little bit more difference of the uh, thinness and thickness of nose as the height of the nose. So I can start playing around with that. I can lift up this um, shading a little bit and I'll add a little bit of a, a line through here. Maybe I'll make this a little bit more hooded, add a little bit more of an eye. Uh, eyelid line there and bring in a little bit more of a thicker brow. Straighten that little brow out and so that we're just changing the features. I'm going to change the shape of her mouth a little. Just so she's got a, a broader mouth. And we can even change the shape of her face. I'm going to round it off. This one I could make even... Uh, more square-jawed, for instance. Um, I'll lift this midpoint of the eyebrow up so she's just got a different look. Just so I've got different people. I'm going to, where this was straight, how about if I swing that in and give her more of a, a dip, a lower nose arch. Come back in here. I might make her nostrils a little bit wider. So this one I lifted up by adding some more shading. This one I'm going to make her nostrils a little bit wider. And I might change, I might bring her mouth up a little bit by adding a line above that lip line. I'm just going to come over with it. Just making her lips a little bit broader, her mouth a bit more generous. Let's bring her, we'll give her bigger cheekbones by bringing this line in and sculpting this out a bit. So although it's a very small face, we can... I mean, and they still could be cousins, right? Because the features are going to be similar because underneath it all, they're exactly the same. <laughs> it's because it's a stamp. But the stamp just gives us a little opportunity to create a few little things. Oh, now I might go in with this darker green here as well with her gum nut baby hair. Gum nut babies were little characters yeah, in Australian children's literature. Snuggle pot and cuddle pie, we love them so much. So I incorporated my flowers, but it was in such a strange way, but I'm very happy that I did. <laughs> 
I might add a little bit of that green, light green under here. So I've got a bit of that green there and even come here. So I've got a little bit of a connection between them. What's going on here, I don't know, but I feel like um, I might just sort of either wipe that out or black that out. Because uh, I don't, the hot pink is, it looks better without the hot pink there, don't you think? So, seeing as I'm talking about it, I'm just going to do it. And the easiest way to do that is um, a bit of paint. So, we'll just do that quickly. Oh, and I have to go, I can hear. I've got to go and do my exercises. A little bit of pink there that's okay actually no it's not and do you know what I'm gonna to have to add the hot pink back into these the leaves I just don't want it down there I think it looks better without it oh hi Max uh, okay so I really have to go and uh, well we did lots of fun things just add some fine lines in there but Yes, we'll, I'll, I'll keep on working on this little chick that, and I'll make, well, I feel like I want her to look a little bit more hand drawn rather than stamped, just because. And the way I can do that is just by going over the lines and literally drawing back over it, and then she really will be hand drawn because I would have drawn over it. Why not? And we can change the details as we go. Look at me, I'm so naughty. I'm so a naughty person because I should go and I can't stop drawing. Just quickly. Just going to tame that hair, it's too beautiful. get there okay well bye I had lots of fun with my showing you my little new little plant and um, I hope you have a wonderful day go and do some art <laughs> go and do go and do some more swatching and learn all your greens get all your greens out and uh, eat your green no don't eat them paint your greens and <laughs> Get your plant colours happening. Bye.